Hey guys, Dr. Steve here. Welcome to The Connected Life. And today we are going to cover how to deal with family members that piss you off. Let's have fun. All right, so maybe, maybe you could think of a family member that you have that is either constantly irritated and frustrating and kind of blowing your top, just like this character here. Uh, and I wanna just uh, share with you a little bit about anger because I think it gets uh, a really, really bad rap uh, just because, hey, like it doesn't feel great. Um, but I think it's important to know that anger really is a strategy. Yes, a strategy. And you, it's easy to take it personally, you know, if someone's yelling at us or they're pissed off and irritated or whatever that is. And also, you know, when we express anger, it's really easy to judge ourselves because we feel like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm really causing harm to my world and my environment and I'm causing harm to myself and the people around me. So it's really easy to begin to accumulate guilt when we are feeling angry and also to build resentment when other people um, are pissed off at us. And so here's what I wanted to mention is that anger definitely is a strategy. Now, what is it a strategy for? Well, there's one thing that it's a strategy for is it creates a separation. So anger when utilized in its utility form is this way to separate two human beings. And especially in family units, there's so much emotional overlap uh, that occurs and emotional dependency that occurs. Anger is just one primitive strategy to basically try to stretch, try to stretch outside and stretch those emotional shackles that we have with family members. Now, it doesn't mean it works. It doesn't mean it's the best strategy. It just means it's a strategy that we utilize. The second thing that it does is it communicates for us Un unmet expectations. So if in our mind we have some fantasy that we have expectations about how someone's supposed to be or how we're supposed to be, and those expectations are not being met by either ourselves or other people, that will stir up anger because to the degree that you're not meeting those expectations is gonna be to the degree that you are angry. So if it's just a smidgen, smidgen, smidgen of expectations, it's not gonna, you're not gonna blow your top. But if it's some real expectations and you're way off on what those expectations are, maybe someone in your family is, is, is let's say, um, you feel like they've betrayed you and betrayal is a huge issue for you. Well, you're gonna be super angry at them for betraying you. Or maybe you did something that maybe they didn't like and they had expectations on how you should behave and now they're pissed off at you. So anger is a way, a communication tool to express that we have not, we have a set of expectations and they're not being met. So that's another way. Um, the other one here that I have as well is when we've been walking, when we've been walking, especially in family dynamics, when we've been walking on eggshells for too long, you know, tiptoeing around other people uh, because maybe they're gonna blow a stack and, uh, and, and just feels, and we're trying to avoid the discomfort of that and we're walking on eggshells, at some point that's gonna get exhausting for us and we'll probably lose our top at some point um, just because it's so, it's so energy draining to try to dance around, tiptoe around people with little, with, on, on eggshells. So um, those are three ways. So it's a, it, it reveals to us potentially that we've been walking on eggshells and dancing around issues, maybe not taking our power and saying what we need to say. That's definitely one way that anger can arise. Second way is that it can be a communication tool to express unmet expectations. Um, and the third way is it also creates a stretch of independence within tight emotional units where someone needs like some breathing room and they need to stretch. So those are three main reasons for anger as a utility, as a utility. So, so the reason I mention those three things is because when I work with people, it's nice for them to value that part and value what anger actually brings to the table. Because if you don't value it, then guess what? How do you think you're gonna feel about yourself every time you do it? 
well, you're going to feel guilty. You're going to feel like you're harming other people. And the reality is, is that it's not necessarily harming other people. It's more of a way to express some of these things that I've mentioned, to gain independence, to communicate on that, and unmet expectations, or to say, once and for all, like, screw this, I've been walking on eggshells for too long. And it's a communication tool and a communication strategy. It's a low, more primitive communication strategy. It's more of a reflexive communication strategy, but it's a communication nonetheless. So let's just take a moment of pause to appreciate the value that it's a communication tool. Okay. Are we done appreciating it? If we put our hands on our heart and say, I love you, anger. Okay, great. I think we, I think we worked through that. So now what do we do? Well, now what we can do is we can take, let's say someone in our family is really making us feel and look this way. So what we can do is we can identify, ideally what we do is we identify the precise behavior that they are doing. And it's not that they're being an idiot. Um, we we want to exclude labels. We want to get labels out of it. Uh, what we want to do is we want to find out and discover the exact behavior that they are doing. Maybe they are talking rudely. You'd say they're being an idiot, but really what you're saying is, is they're talking rudely to me. Okay, that's one thing that could anger you. Or they're ignoring me. They're, they're, they're crossing their arms and turning their back to me. Okay, so we want to break down, like you can, you can start with the bigger label of like, hey, they're being an idiot, they're being a jackass, um, they're being annoying. Okay, label. Now, break that down a little easier to like, well, what, what is the actual behavior that they're doing that either has you annoying or betrayed you or frustrates you or they're being an idiot? How are they actually doing that? Like, what are they doing? And then once you discover exactly what they're doing and you work through that to like say, this is exactly what they're doing. They are talking rudely. They're crossing their arms. They're ignoring me that way. Um, they're ignoring me by turning their body um, or they're not returning my phone call, okay, like something specific like that. Um, then we've got that kind of nutted down right to the core of what the irritant or trigger is or whatever that is that's really kind of like stirring that emotion in you. So we want to nail, nail it down from a general label down to a specific action that they're taking. Now, once you got this specific action, that's there, then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna coach you through an exercise on how to deal that and actually change the energy dynamics of that so that you can free your tensions in your body, open the heart, clear the mind, and, and you can get down to reality. So um, we're gonna introduce that on the exercise portion. So now, what specifically is bothering me? If you're just joining the video at this point, I want you just to kind of like rewind a minute and a half or so, and I want you to go through that exercise, going from labeling someone to getting super specific as to the actual thing that's really bothering you. Now, this thing, excuse me, that's bothering you is charged and hooked into the fight or flight system that you have, the, what I've called the, the sympathetic system, the fight or flight system. So this thing that's bothering you is has you, your biology, hooked into the sympathetic fight or flight pathways. So what we are looking to do in this is we're looking to basically take some of the charge off of that fight or flight system so that you can feel more ease in your body and more clarity in your mind so that they don't have so much power over you. Because as you think about them and as you stew about them, they're basically taking up, as they say, free real estate in your brain and they're actually governing and ruling and having power over your body and your energy. Is like, is that what you want? I, I would imagine not. So, but just know that until that clears, they have power over you. They have power over your body, your energy, and your the real estate of your brain. So wouldn't it be valuable if we could just clean them up and clean our perception up so that we can release uh, that and not take up any more time or energy, okay? So what specifically is bothering me, okay? I got it, I got specifically what's bothering me. They're talking rudely about, okay. Now, the next, the next point to start to discover is I want you to find a moment in time where you spoke rudely about someone, okay? So go in and 
close your eyes, and go into a moment where you have spoken rudely to someone. And you know you have, because we all have. So go to a moment where you've spoke rudely to someone. It could be a parent, it could be a teacher, it could be a friend, it could be a colleague. It doesn't really matter who it is, but there's someone in your life that maybe you're picking on, maybe you've spoken rudely at. Um, so I want you to go to that moment where you have done that. Okay, so when you are thinking about your action of speaking rudely, I want you to just ask yourself this question. Is in that moment of speaking rudely, what's the benefit to me? What is the benefit to me of speaking rudely? What is the benefit of speaking rudely in that moment? And also, as I speak rudely to them, what's the benefit to them? Okay, so consider that. What is, so think of the speaking rudely, we'll call SR, speaking rudely. If you go to the moment where you spoke rudely, I want you to know what is the benefit or value, benefit to me, and what's the benefit to them? Those are the two questions that you want to answer. So what's the benefit to me and what's the benefit to them for me speaking rudely in that moment? Okay, now, the reason that we do this is that I want you to start to unpack what the value of speaking rudely is. Because it has a high charge, you have a high emotional charge on that, we want to actually start to sort out in the mind why that's actually a benefit and why, you're expre why that's a valuable expression or a way about going about business. Because you're so irritated with them doing it that we want to see and first acknowledge that you've done that before, okay? What, that you've done that before. That's an old spiritual principle of seeing others in yourself and seeing yourself in others. So that principle is just finding moments where you have done that to other people. Okay, great. So once you track those moments down, and may I, I'd encourage you to find five or maybe 10 moments where you've, where you've done that with other people, then what you wanna do is unpack and say, okay, what was the benefit to me in that moment? And what was the benefit to them in, the, in that moment? And what that does is if you find five or 10 moments finding the mutual benefits, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna start to lighten your emotional load and you're gonna start to understand. You're gonna start to understand yourself better, which means you're going to understand the other person better. And so when you understand yourself better in terms of speaking rudely, as an example, maybe you'll have something else, but speaking rudely, and you'll start to see why and how you do that and you begin to understand yourself better to that expression, you'll instantly begin the process of understanding the other person better. When we do that, when we have more clarity and understanding of why somebody's doing something, the emotional charge begins to get minimized. We reduce that sympathetic, that fight or flight charge. We actually cool, begin to cool that off. And the cooling off process is important because then the more you do that, the, when you're around them, uh, then you'll be cooler, so to speak, um, and, and exactly what you want to be. Instead of being heated in that moment and already heated because there's no value and you can't see why they're doing this, once you start to actually see that you've done it before and that there's benefit to it, you'll see, oh my God, that's probably why they do it. And you'll have this internal understanding. And the, when you find those five to 10 repetitions and you have more understanding, you're literally cooling yourself off from the heated sympathetic fight or flight mechanism, cooling yourself off, cool as a cucumber. And when you're cool as a cucumber, now you can be around them easier and they could still do that same expression. And it literally kind of rolls off you, bounces off you much easier. So that's what I would want to encourage you as an exercise to do. And it's really a, a game changer. When I've done this with people, um, you know, they could report back. Oftentimes what happens is the other person actually stops the behavior altogether when you truly understand and appreciate what's going on. Um, but even if you did five to 10 repetitions of it, you're gonna have more understanding. Um, you're, you're, you're gonna have more uh, emotional availability, which is that cooling process. And you're gonna be more of a cool cat around them. You're gonna be more flexible, more nimble as they go and express and do their expressions. So this exercise, I tell you, is definitely worth doing. Um, that's, this is how you do it. So you just find a moment where you've done it. You find the benefit to you in that moment and the benefit to them in that moment of you doing that. 
find five to 10 repetitions of that, you'll begin to cool off and you'll begin to see yourself in them and you'll begin to understand them a lot easier so that when they interact with you, guess what? You're the cool cat. Uh, and who doesn't wanna be the cool cat sometimes? So uh, I hope this exercise was really helpful for you and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time on The Connect Life. Hey guys, Dr. Steve here. If you hate this channel, leave a nasty comment below and don't subscribe. But if you do like this content, I'd love for you to be able to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave a wonderful, inspiring comment below as to what you're learning. So we'll talk to you soon.